Amen. Amen is, is you know, and, and y'all if you hear us say it here too when we're agreeing with Pastor Brett. We're agreeing with the word. Say amen. And that's so be it. We're in agreement with that. And that's what we're saying today. Well, I'm uh, Pastor Matt. Uh, I'm the youth pastor and wear a few other hats around here. Uh, but I'm, I'm so privileged to get the opportunity to, to share the word with you today as a uh, Pastor Brett and Pastor Mary are in Florida um, celebrating a wedding, um, so um, it's good. It's good when uh, they can get away and, and know that everything's in good hands here, that stuff's taken care of, and uh, our pastors need a, need a break every once in a while, although Brett loves <laughs> being up here preaching, so he, I will say he would rather be here this morning than in Florida, I can just about guarantee, but, but it's good for, good for them to do what they're called to do. Um, we're going to start out today in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23, and um, we're going to be just talking, just, just reminding ourselves, uh, again, who He is and, and who He is through us. And, and it's, it's one of those things, you know, we're, we're talking about it a lot here, but there's always something in life that wants to, to throw us off track and, and throw us off the truth and throw us off what, what God says about us. Uh, so we have to... to Continually renew our mind, continue to focus in on Jesus, to focus in on truth, to focus in on who He is. So in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23, it says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. If you, if you read verse 24 and you don't read verse, you know, some people kind of pull things out of context, if, you know, hermeneutics, we want to keep it all... All, all in context to the word. So if you pull that scripture out and you don't read the one before it, and, and I, I remember growing up and somebody, you know, telling me, you know, you need to uh, put on the new man. And so I was like, oh, I got to put on the new man. And so, you know, what I need to do to put on the, well, I, I, I need to be renewed again. And we know that we've been made a new creation in Christ, right? There, there isn't anything in our spirit that needs to happen again. But that was my thought process. Well, maybe, you know, I need to get saved again. Um, and we had a, it's funny, and, and everybody grows up in different, you know, uh, situations, but, you know, it was, it was uh, the denomination that I was in, it was like, you know, you need to, to get saved, and then you might lose it, and, and you're always kind of, you know, teetering on the edge, walking the tightrope, and uh, we went to a church camp, and uh, it was me and one of my buddies, and his little brother was there, and uh, he was uh, in one of the, you know, little kids' kids camps or whatever, and we're just up visiting and hanging out with him, and he just had an awesome week, he was so excited, and he was, you know, telling us about his week and, and you know, well, you know, how'd it go? And, you know, well, I had fun and did this. And then uh, I went down to the altar every night and got saved. <laughs> and, and my buddy was asking, what are you doing during the day that you needed to go every night and get saved at church camp? You know, there's not too much, you know, trouble you can get into, but we know that's not the truth. You don't, you, you get it once and you got it. So you, you don't need, you don't need to do it again. But, but that's the mentality. But it says in verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So, so it's our thought process that needs a revolution. Our, our mind needs, needs a revolt over the old man, over, over the old you know, line of thinking. Um, our old line of thinking was weakness and lack. And that's you know, the, under the old nature and, and, and despair a lot of times. Our new line of thinking is victory. It's peace. It's righteousness. It's joy in the Holy Ghost. These are, these are our new thought processes. But if we don't continue to, to get our mind and keep it reined into the truth, keep it reined in to who God's made us to be, it tends to wonder. And, and you know, if you've been here any time at all, you, you know you are a spirit. That's the real you. That's the eternal you. That's, uh, you know, our, our spirits are going to go on. And that's the, the you know, we, we're uh, a spirit being first. God created us a spirit being first. Now, when... Adam, you know, goofed up. He kind of flipped everything because we are a spirit. We possess a soul. Our soul doesn't possess us and we live in a body. Um, so Adam was operating out of that and then, you know, he, he goofed it up. And so our, our, our flesh, you know, our body and our soul kind of tries to take the reins. And uh, even, even a few days back, I, I woke up and I'm going about my day and, you know, doing my things and just kind of had it, you know, feeling lumpy. You know, just, you know, sometimes it's just kind of, and, and, and just kind of not feeling so good, and eh, I could kind of, I could kind of be depressed today, or I could kind of be sad, or just, just kind of. I was like, no, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that today. You're gonna, li- I'm, Matt, you're gonna line up with truth. You're gonna have a good day. You're gonna enjoy yourself, and you know what I did? I said I did. I, I lined up with the truth. I lined up with the word, and I had a good day. 
And a lot of times we let the things of this life, we let our own situations, circumstances, even, even our, our emotions take the reins and run off. And that's you know, something I'm, I'm telling, you know, I'm dealing with, uh, as the youth pastor, I deal with a lot of emotional teenagers, um, you know, and figuring, figuring things out, you know, to a certain extent. But, but that's, you know, there's so many times that I'll, I'll, I'll even call out, you know, on, on Wednesday nights in the past where, you know, hey, depression's got to get out of here. It's not allowed to stick around. It's got to go. Um, and, and, and then, you know, the follow-up to that is you tell it to go. If you wake up tomorrow and this feeling comes, you tell it to go. You send it where it needs to be. You tell it to get it because you, you, you're not going to allow that feeling. But a lot of times we become so adjusted to feelings. We become so adjusted to circumstances that that becomes a, a, a dictator in our lives. And that's not where God's called us to be. That's not who's, who's called us to be. In Psalms chapter 24, verse 8, we're going to jump over there. And uh, the, uh, the phrase in Christ, uh, is, uh, or a variation thereof, is 75 times in the New Testament. Uh, so so that's, that's a real important, important truth, right? Yeah. That, that we realize that we're in Christ. That, that um, you know, we know that he comes to live in our heart, you know, that our, our spirit's recreated. We're also part of his body, that we are in Christ. And that, that we need to continually be aware of that. But I think also, too, we need to be aware of Christ and who he is, his personality, his, his, the, the truth that, that everything that, that he is you know, and, and does. We need to be aware of that because if, if I say that, you're in Christ, you're in Christ, but we don't have, a, have, a, have an idea or concept of who Christ is. If we don't have a concept of the victory that he possesses, if we don't have a concept of, of what all he's done for us, then that could you know, be a really cool thing to say, but not have very much effect in your life. But if you truly begin to realize who he is, what he's done, we're going to talk about that a little bit today, all of a sudden, oh man, it really means something to be in Christ. It really means something. Paul wasn't just messing around whenever he, he said this in the New Testament. He wasn't just messing around when he said these things. In, uh, in Psalm ch chapter 24 and verse 8, it says, Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. And uh, you're, you're, man, you're just talking about in Christ. Now you jump back over to the Old Testament. Yeah, let me, let me get there. So, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, we, we get these concepts of Jesus and, and him being, uh, you know, peace, peaceful and, and always calm. And, and he does calm your storm. I'm not, you know, uh, there, there's, there's, there's truth there. But, but we get kind of a weak, watered-down gospel. We get a weak, watered-down picture of, of, of Christ. We get a weak, and it, it, it's Scripture saying he's mighty in battle. There, there's something forceful about the Lord that he's, he's not weak. He's not backwards. He's not awkward. He's forceful. He's strong. And when we see, see ourselves in, in him, we need to see ourselves strong. Mighty in battle, you know, it's, it's uh, in, in the Old Testament, you know, they were... You know, battle, battle was much more a part of everyday life. I mean, it, if you read through it, it's just crazy. Uh, you know, it's a different time, a different generation. But, I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're in scraps all the time, you know, in fights and all kinds of craziness is going on. Um, I got in a, a few, few waylays back in the day. Um, and uh, I, I was, uh, uh, I don't know, I can't, can't remember. I was probably around Tyler's age, six, seven, eight. But, you know, I got in a, a, a fight with the neighborhood bully. And we were talking back and forth. Well, he punched me. And so um, I ran and I, I, I was at a friend's house and I grabbed a, you know, those tees that have like the pointy, the T ball tees, the pointy, you know, base end. I was chasing him down the street with that and <laughs> hit him in the back. That was, that was, <laughs> and then, then he came back after me and I ran home and uh, went, to, went straight to my room and I'm, I'm upset, you know, vis visibly, <laughs> you know. Uh, my, my uh, stepmom came in there. I ran in there, and I had a, you know, one of those like dumbbells, and I'm in there. I'm like lifting it. I'm like, <laughs> after the fact, after the fact, we, you know, the the fight's already over, and I'm trying to get get you know ripped and to, to go and take him out. I'm gonna I'm gonna go after him. The, ba the battle was over, but I was I was gonna be be ready for the next round. Uh, so it's 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 not it's not as a. Uh, uh, I don't know, prominent in our society now, but, but, you know, in the Old Testament, you know, they, they knew what somebody that mighty, mighty in battle, 
you know, if there was, if there was a, you know, a general of the army or somebody walking down the street and they had on the full gear and the sword and the, the shield, I mean, you know, you, you kind of took notice. And that's our God. I mean, you, you take notice, you know, of, of, of who he is, the victory he's, he's already purchased for us, who, what he's done. You take notice, and, and there's an awe, there's a, a, a respect for Christ. Yeah, he's our best friend. Yeah, he's our brother. But oh my goodness, he's full of, of, of power and, and might, mighty in battle. We're going to jump back over into Colossians chapter 2. And we're mighty. We're mighty in what we do. If we're in him, we're mighty. If we're in him, we're great. And there's, you know, growing up, uh, there's some people I can even reflect back in my life. Uh, my grandma, she was, she was a prayer. Um, little old lady, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, a, a different time too, you know, it's, it's, they didn't turn on the, the, the news and, and watch it all the evening long or whatever else. She was, I remember growing up, I'd go over and, you know, I learned, you know, different prayers and we learned Bible scriptures and we learned things. She was a prayer and she was mighty in what she did. I, I know there's things that have affected, been an effect of the course of my life because of her prayers. How you pray, what you do, there, there's might in that. My stepmom, she, um, she used to, she just had this awesome relation with the, with the Holy Spirit. She would, she would get things from time to time. She knew when somebody was gonna uh, was pregnant before they told anybody. That was like her. The Holy Spirit always let her know. She would know somebody, somebody's pregnant before. She's like, yeah, I'm kind of, kind of been, you know, we need to pray for so and so, and and like, you know, a week or two later, we'd find out they were pregnant. So yeah, we didn't need to pray for them because they were dealing with all the morning sickness or whatever. But it was, this, it was this awesome relationship with God. But I also know there's a side of that where she prayed things that affected my life, that affected what I was going through. Um, there was times where I was in grave danger. And, and, and I, I, was, I remember you know, this instance where it was, it was not good. And, and because of some decisions I made, you know, I, I wound up you know, staying safe and everything was good. Well, I wound up telling my parents that story later. I won't go through the whole thing because it's long. But she's like, yeah, we, were, we, we had to pull over and pray for you. That is like the exact same time as what, you know, that, that situation was going on. She was mighty, mighty in prayer, mighty in battle, mighty in what she, and that's you. You're mighty. And it may, not, it may look a little bit different nowadays, but when you pray, when you speak, when you declare, there's might in there. There's strength in that. And it's, it's, it's not what the world sees as strength. It's this godly. It's, it's the spiritual stuff. It's the true stuff. In Colossians chapter 2, hallelujah, in verse 13, we're going to start there. <clears throat> You're mighty in prayer. And you being dead in your trespass, trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him. And that's one, that's one of those in him. You're, you're with him. When, when he died on the cross, you died. The old man died. I mean, I'm not going to go through all the scriptures today, but you died when he died. When he was buried, you were buried. It, the universe sees it like this. We don't see it like this. You know, the, the heaven sees it like this. Hell sees it like this. We don't see Sometimes we miss it. Whenever he was buried, you were buried. But guess what? Whenever he was raised, we were raised in him. It says we were made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. The law in, in you know, the Old Testament goes through the law and, and, you know, it was, it was a, a schoolmaster. It was leading us, leading us to Jesus. It was, it was directing people, you know, you can't fulfill all this stuff. You just can't do it. And it was actually, it wound up being contrary to us because nobody could do it but him. Nobody could fulfill it. Nobody could take it on but him. But he wiped out the handwriting requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And, ha and he has taken it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when we get to verse 15, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it. Good stuff. He triumphed over everything that you can ever face in this life in the cross. He already won. The victory is ours. There's, there's, you know, it was so good he sat down. There's nothing left for you to, to work or strive or try to, try to get done. He's, he's our triumph. He's our victory. Everywhere we go, we carry the fragrance of his victory. Um, everywhere, everything you, know, you do and say, you're carrying him and this victory. And you may not see it. 
But this victory goes with you, goes before you, stays behind you when, when you leave. This victory that we have in him. And it says, made a public spectacle of them. I'm going to read this in a couple different versions. This is good stuff. Because sometimes we don't, we don't you know, if, the, if you watch, you know, movies or, I'm not, I'm not like into the scary movie thing at all. But, you know, it's like, you know, the, the man, I'm, I'm always like, if I see something or it's like really intense, I'm like, I want to pray for the person. I'm like, oh, Lord, help them, you know. I'm, oh, yeah, it's just a movie. They're an actor. Um, it's funny. I was talking to Brett one time uh, about something, and he's like, you know, talking about this show. And I was like, oh, man, I really feel bad. He's like, they're actors. I was like, I know, but, I know, but it's just like I really, feel, I really feel bad for them. I was like, I got to keep reminding, keep reminding myself that. But, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting because, you know, it's, it's the, the world, you know, puts so much, you know, like, like the enemy has so much power. The enemy has, he's got nothing. Right. He's got nothing on you. Right. Sickness and disease has nothing on you. Poverty has nothing on you. Fear has nothing on you. Depression has nothing on you. It's got no power. Now, some people want to embrace what's not theirs and want to take that on, but you have a decision to make. God's not going to take care of this is, this is You've got some responsibility in this, too. In, in verse 15, in the Weymouth translation, it says, And the hostile princes and rulers he shook off from himself. And I love this because it was like the death, hell, the grave. They put everything they could. I mean, their, their starting unit, everything they could. And he shook it off like, is that all you got? Is that, is that, you know, I love that version. It's, he shook it off and boldly displayed them as his conquest. And boldly displayed them as his conquest. Hallelujah. He said, cancer, this is my conquest. It's already beaten. AIDS, what, whatever else even is going to come, this is my conquest. The flu, whatever, this is my conquest. It's beaten, it's whipped. Look at this, I, I beat it. In front of the, the court of the universe, he took all that and he, and he beat it down and showed it off for everyone to see. In, uh, in the uh, Barclay translation, on the cross, he stripped the demonic powers and authorities of their power and made a public, public spectacle of them as if they had been captives in a victor's triumphal procession. So, so you can imagine like the court of the universe and, you know, the Bible you know, it's, it's pretty descriptive, but, but you got to use your imagination sometime. You know, in, in, the, in the good old days, in the Old Testament, there's actually a, a scripture in, in uh, Judges where Judah went and fought the Canaanites. And basically, they're on the run. They, they capture the leader, and they cut off his thumbs and his, and his uh, big toes. Rending, I mean, if you don't have any thumbs, in any power, I mean, you know, that's, that's, and he's making pretty much a public spectacle of them. You got no power here now. You really can't do anything. You don't have any strength. You can't, you, you, you can't even stand up. You know, that's what Jesus, he, he took all the power, all the sting, all the pain, all the, all the issues, all the challenges, and he rendered it completely powerless and showed it off to the universe. I got you. I, I got this taken care of. So, so a lot of times our, our, uh, our fight, our struggle, is not to win the battle because it's already done in Christ. But it's the spirit of our mind. Where are we putting on? What are we putting on? What thought process are we, are we uh, you know, going after? Because you already had the victory. And some of y'all came in with stuff today. That's okay. God's good. Holy Spirit's here. His ability, His power. Same power raised Christ from the dead is here to meet your need. And it's okay. You bring stuff in. We're going through situations. We're fighting. You know, there, there's some stuff going on. And, and in our minds, we may be fighting, but the battle's... His, it's not ours. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. There was, uh, you know, and a lot of times it's, it's, not, it's not us trying to win something we don't have. It's enforcing what's already been given to us. Yeah. It's enforcing what's already been given to us. Yeah. In a healing school, it's been several years ago, but, uh, you know, we, we had a lady come in, and, and we would meet with people, and, and some people would be there for, you know, a week or two weeks or, you know, whatever their, their schedule, and they would come in from different parts of the com- country, and so we get multiple days, and this is so cool how the Holy Spirit worked this out, because sometimes you just get one, one shot to pray with somebody, you know, and then they're gone, and, and you know, and, and so she was there the, the, first, the first day, and um, I don't know, first, second day, whatever it was, and we, we uh, had a group, and we prayed for her, laid hands on her, I mean, the power got hit, it was awesome, and she was dealing, she had a, and I don't, I don't know what the 
I'm not good at remembering all the sicknesses and all that good stuff, but she had, she had a breathing, you know, some sort of debilitating breathing issue where if she got up and walked to the back of the room, she's huffing and puffing. So we're praying for her. I mean, power of God's there. She's like jumping up and down. She's excited. You know, she's, you know, dancing around the room. I mean, you know, God's moving. I'm seeing, I mean, this is, this is a lady, again, literally, she's moving around at all. And she's, she's huffing and puffing, and she is, I'm like, she got it. Yes, she's got it. You know, this is good, good stuff. Well, she goes back to her hotel that, you know, that night, and she was like, I was so excited, and I, you know, and, and she, she is going up and down the stairs and doing her thing. Well, at a certain part of the day, she started getting tired again. She started, you know, breathing hard, and she's like, oh, no, oh, no, it's coming, you know, it's, it's coming back. So she, she gets back the next day and, and starts telling us this, and so, uh, you know, we, we, you know, lay hands on her again, and, and man, I mean, the power of God's there. And it, it was really good because, I mean, again, God's good. His, his, you know, his ability is always at work. And it's, you know, this healing thing is not as hard, you know, as we make. Sometimes it's just slowing down and receiving what, again, what he's already given for us. But his power is at work. She, she's feeling better. Um, so we, you know, uh, are getting ready to send her back to the hotel. And the Holy Spirit gave me something. So I actually caught her out in the lobby. I started talking to her. And, you know, it's, it's, sometimes we, we get things. But then we step away from the excitement or the emotional or whatever, and, and you hear about different people, you know, well, they lost their healing and, right. and so on and so on. Well, no, no, they just didn't enforce what was given to them. Right. Right. They, they had what God had given them. So I, I began to minister. I said, you know, okay, when you, when you do this thing, you back to the hotel, if you start experiencing something different than it's right here, you begin to speak. You begin to declare. You begin to do just what we're doing and get, you know, get back to where you're, you're declaring what your body's going to do and not your body declaring how it's going to feel. So she was so pumped the next day. It's so cool again to, you know, multiple days because she got back and she's like, you know what? It was just like the day before. It started coming on me. So I started speaking the word and speaking the truth and declaring, you know, over my body. How, and sure enough, that that feeling that she was able, she's like, I was running up and down the stairs, and I was, and she was just telling me how much, and she was just so excited, just the joy that she was experiencing because of what, what God had done. And, and the, the victory is ours, but the enforcement. Sometimes we, we need to step in and say, hey, devil, not today. You're already beat. You're already defeated. You're already whipped. You, you don't have any place here. You know, the world wants to put its fear on us. There's a lot of fearful people out there, if you haven't noticed. They want to put their fear on us, and I don't have to. I don't have to receive that. I don't have to accept that. Yeah, they can. I'm, you know, there's no condemnation, and I'm not. I'm not. Everybody can. Is it their own relationship and place with the Lord? But I don't have to receive fear. I don't have to receive terror. I don't have to receive. You know what this world wants to give, and the more that we again continue to remind ourselves of truth, remind ourselves of who He's made us to be, remind ourselves of His love, His goodness, His grace, and be mighty. I mean, there, there's, there's an attitude that comes with this. And I love it, you know, and Pastor Brett's a very, you know, John Wayne, you know, <laughs> uh, swing out over hell and spit in the devil's eye. But I, I, I love that because, you know, I've been here for a while, and, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a little bit more, it's just my personality, I'm a little bit more backed off. I'm a little, you know, I'm not, I'm not in your face. It's really cool kind of how God will put you in different situations, too, in life um, that will help you through your personality issues. Don't ever just get stuck in, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just this way. That's just how I am. Um, I got to manage a restaurant for several years, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was cool. I, you know, but I, I learned, you know, kind of working there, you get different personalities, and I've got to kind of be the boss. I've kind of got to, you know not just kind of, or things go haywire. If, if I don't tell people what to do, it can, it can, you know, there's, there's 40 people there that are looking for me for, you know, instruction and guidance. In your life, you're the boss. Doesn't matter what your personality says, you're the boss. You've been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus with authority and power to speak and declare over your life which direction it's going to go. You're the boss. Your buddy's not the boss. Your spouse, you know, they, they, I love them. I love them. But if I've got symptoms on my body, I tell them where to go. I speak to that thing. The people in your life, you know, you can get wise counsel. I appreciate wise counsel. 
but I'm responsible for me. I'm responsible. And, and you know, I remember, you know, growing up in, in a Christian home, which was awesome. Um, and I love my parents. And, and I remember, you know, them praying, you know, over the years, you know, different things in my life. And, and I relied on their prayers. I relied on their relationship with God. But I hit a point, you know, where, okay, I'm getting a little older now. You know, I'm, I'm going to college. I'm, I'm learning this for myself. You know, sometimes we, we lean on those people in our life. You know, those, and there are some good spiritual leaders in our lives. But you can only lean on them for so long. You've got a unique relationship with the God of this universe. You've got a unique relationship with Jesus, the mighty, powerful, full of life, full of ability. You've got a unique relationship with him. It's not your, your relationship isn't someone else's relationship, and that's wonderful. But also, you can't lean on somebody else's relationship. When rubber meets the road, when things get tough, when things get a little bit difficult... It's you. You being the boss. You stepping up. You being mighty. You being full of power and full of ability and realizing who God's made you to be. In this church, we have some amazing people. And, and the, the, I mean, absolutely, there's a lot of people who could be up here speaking today. Um, and I feel very honored. But I, I say that in, in there's a lot of people that, you know, declare and know what to do and know what to say. And sometimes we lean on, oh, you know, what, what would Pastor Brett, we need to call Pastor Mary, we need to... Hey, let's take, let's take this thing on. And if we still need somebody, that's okay. That's, that's good because we're, we're a family. We love. But hey, I want to be in the middle of this thing myself. I want to see this power at work in my life myself. I don't want to get to the other side and miss out on all the good stuff that God wants to show off through me. Because if I'm doing this in my life for myself, I can do it for someone else. And that's the goal, right? To share this goodness and this glory of his gospel. Amen? Amen. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I'm running out of time. Thank you, Jesus. Actually, let's go to let's go to he Hebrews real quick and two, and then we'll then we'll jump back there. Because you're different from the world. And if, if you're around unbelievers or, or believers that don't know the truth and you fellowship and iron sharpens iron, right. uh, unfortunately, being around people that are talking doubt and disbelief and don't know who they are in Christ and can, can also affect the spirit of your mind, your thought process. So it's really important because in, in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14, in, in as much... Then, as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. He destroyed him. He wiped him out. In verse 15, and released those who through fear of death were all their life subject to bondage. The Living Translation, he delivered those who through fear of death had been living all their lives as slaves to constant dread. Fear's a real thing that people allow in their lives, and especially unbelievers. It says here that, you know, whether they say, say so or not, they're living their lives in constant fear of death because they don't have the hope that we have in Christ. That's why we need to get them in. That's why we need to bring them in, you know, because they don't have what we have. We, we, we need to be ready to give an answer always for the hope that we have in Him. There's a lot of people in fear right now. There's a lot of people in dread. There's a lot of people, and, and fear is using that imagination, that God-given imagination that we have that we can use for hope, for good things, for, for our faith to operate in, but it's twisted, and it's imagined in the bad stuff. So there's a lot of people that, and, and the, the spirit of our mind being renewed to truth, all of a sudden we switch that switch from being, beginning to think about the negative to, oh my goodness, no, it's going to go good for me. I have his victory. I can walk in truth. I have everything. He, he, he's going to give me everything I need for life and godliness. He's going to take care of me. He's going to bless me. He's going to fulfill my needs. So that's their stance. But what's our stance as the body of Christ? In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. Hallelujah. And Paul's, Paul's praying a prayer here for the Ephesians. And it says... Uh, he prays, basically, that they'll, they'll know, and he goes through a few things, and then, then this is the third one he gets to, and that they'll know his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly realms. 
The, same, the power that's on the inside of you is the same power that he used when he raised Christ from the dead. That's the power that lives in us. That same power. That same power. Oh my goodness. Just think about it for a moment. We're, we're, we're concerned about this issue or that issue and we've got the power that raised Christ from the dead. That same power is living in us. And Paul prayed that they would know that. That they would know. And I pray today that you would know this power. If you came in fighting sickness, if you came in and, and some symptoms trying to attach itself to your body, that you'd realize the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in me and is killing cancer, killing this symptom, killing this virus, killing this disease, because His power lives in me. We don't live in fear. We don't walk in fear. We walk in power and might. Hallelujah. <clears throat> And he placed him far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. Man, anything, anything. That, I mean, there's pretty, there's, he didn't leave anything out there. All, all power, all rule, authority, power and dominion. And every name that is invoked, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. That last verse, 23 in the Message Bible um, I like, I don't know, I, there, there's something I like about how this is stated. It says, at the center of this all, Christ rules the church. The church you see is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts, by which he fills everything with his presence. We know we're seated with him in heavenly places, that we are the church, that we are his body in this earth, and we're living in a critical time to be able to show forth his glory in the world, we're not just on the outskirts wondering what the world's going to do. We're the solution. We're the center of the universe, pretty much, is what the, what the word's saying. We're the center. We're the end all, be all. We're the truth. We're the carriers of light. We, got a, we have an awesome job in this world because he didn't, he didn't, I was saying Wednesday night too, he didn't leave it up to anybody else. You're the plan. There's no backup plan. Oh, we're going to send in the angels. If the No, no, you're the plan to win this world. You're the plan to share His love. You're the plan to be Jesus to whoever you're going to be Jesus to this week. But it's going to be hard to be Jesus if you're going around talking about symptoms or you're talking about how, how bad it is or talking about how concerned you are of, you know, what if things get shut down or what if this happens or what? No, that's not us. That's not us. Doesn't matter what happens. Doesn't matter. The world is peripheral to us, to who He's made us to be, to who we are in Christ. It's on the outskirts. We're in the interior of God's plan and purpose in this earth. And that's the most important thing. I mean, I love, I love my family. I love the things I get to do at work. But the most important thing is who I am in this life and how I broadcast Jesus' love, His grace, and His goodness. Because we only get one chance, one shot at this. It's, a, it's an awesome shot. It's an awesome chance. But as you know, Pastor Brett's always talking about, you know, I want to get to the other side and, you know, Moses run up and smack me because I had God living on the inside of me. And I didn't do anything with it. I didn't see any blind eyes open. Didn't see any, you know, deaf ears pop open. I didn't see anyone, you know, uh, become a new creation. Thank God we get this opportunity. We get this opportunity to share His love. And we do it from a place of strength. We do it a place from might. We do it, you know, this says the, the kingdom of God suffereth violence and violent take it by force. That there's, that there's a little bit of push and pull to this thing. That it's not always easy and comfortable. And we, you know, we're in here on Sunday morning and got the cushy chairs and, and it's all relaxed. But, but there's, you know, sometimes the enemy's going to throw stuff up. Oh no, you're defeated. You're whipped. We're reminded of, of how much Jesus absolutely beat you and took you out. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, the world's peripheral to you. You're the center of God's plan. You're the center of His hope for this world. I challenge you to, to, to pray out this week from a place of strength. Pray out from a place of truth. Pray out and be that mighty person that God's called you to be. It's not weak, it's strong. It's, 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 it's so, there's so much that, that we're leaving on the table because we get busy with the things of this life. And whether it's just praying, you know, you're going to be around friends and family and all that good stuff. It's Thanksgiving. Man, how much more can we affect them, affect the people around, affect people? If we're living from this mindset of, man, I'm carrying God's love, His grace, His goodness. 
I'm carrying His ability into all this. No matter what they're bringing in, what symptom, what issue, what challenge they're dealing with. (laughs) 